In the past, the RMS Titanic was operated by White Star Line. On April 15, 1912, while it was making its first voyage from Southampton, England, to New York City, it collided with an iceberg and sank in the North Atlantic Ocean. It is still the cruise ship, or ocean liner, that has sunk with the highest number of fatalities during times of peace. The Harland and Wolfe shipyard in Belfast was responsible for the construction of the world's largest ship, the Titanic. The vessel measured 882 feet 9 inches in length and 92 feet 6 inches in width at its widest point. It featured 10 decks. These included the boat deck, which held the lifeboats, a deck also known as the promenade deck, with first-class cabins, a smoking lounge, and writing rooms, B deck, also known as the bridge deck, with more first-class cabins and accommodations, C deck, also known as the shelter deck, with crew members and third-class public rooms, and D deck, also known as the saloon deck, along with hundreds of immigrants from Britain, Ireland, Scandinavia, and other European countries, they boarded the Titanic with the hope of starting over in the United States of America and Canada. Among the passengers were some of the wealthiest people in the world. A great number of works, both nonfiction and fiction, have been based on the sinking of the Titanic, which continues to be a mystery. These 15 photographs of the Titanic were taken prior to the ship's sinking. 1. Captain and Purser During the ship's journey from England to Ireland, a few days before it sank, this photograph was taken by Purser Hugh McElroy, who handled money on board, and Edward J. Smith, the captain of the Titanic, who is pictured on the right. In the song by Dido, it is stated that Captain Smith and his ship went down. Following the collision between the boat and the iceberg, First Officer William Murdoch stated that he made an appearance on the ship's bridge and inquired about the nature of the incident. The phrase, an iceberg, was spoken by Murdoch. On the other hand, numerous hypotheses explain his passing. Victory According to what was written by Craig Wade in Titanic, End of a dream, Captain Smith died five times, ranging from being brave to being ashamed. Indeed, it is the case. According to one version of events, he bravely waited for his ship to sink, while another version claims that he was carried away by a wave. It is said that he dove into the water while carrying a child. Prior to the 15th of April, Captain Smith had been at sea for more than four decades, had experienced a limited number of mishaps, and had never been held accountable for any injury or death. Despite the fact that the photographer managed to escape before the boat sank, Purser McElroy passed away when it arrived in Ireland. 2. Olympic Games among the three Olympic-class ocean liners operated by White Star Line, the Titanic was the largest of the three. A sister ship to the Titanic, the RMS Olympic, which was slightly smaller than the Titanic, was the first of both classes. A photograph was taken of the two ships together in 1911, which was one year prior to the sinking of the Titanic. As a result of the collision with the HMS Hawk, the Olympic sustained significant damage. After an investigation into the collision, it was determined that the Olympic was at fault and White Star Line was ordered to pay damages. This virtually caused the company to go bankrupt. A number of conspiracies assert that the owner of the ship, J. Bruce Ismay, planned the sinking of the ship in order to collect insurance money for the losses sustained by the Olympic and Titanic. Numerous individuals are of the opinion that a third vessel, the Californian, was supposed to arrive and rescue the passengers. In spite of the fact that these and other conspiracies are tempting, the accident was caused by the ship's increased speed, which allowed it to arrive in New York City more quickly. Elizabeth Lyons, a survivor of the Titanic, testified before the Senate that she overheard Captain Smith and Ismay discussing the speed of the ship and the possibility of using the backup boilers in order to arrive in New York one day earlier than initially planned. Ismay is said to have jumped into one of the remaining lifeboats, Despite the fact that the captain had already passed away, after the sinking of the Titanic, he was one of the most reviled individuals on the planet, despite the fact that there were reports that he had entered the ship first and survived. A great number of people held him responsible for the catastrophe. Violet Jessup was a passenger on the Olympic when it was involved in a collision with another vessel in 1911. She survived the sinking of the Titanic in 1912 as well as the explosion of the HMHS Britannic in 1916, which was the Olympics' sister ship. 3. Life Jacket Inspection 
Before the ship is scheduled to depart, the life jackets, which were referred to as life belts at the time, were examined by the Board of Trade Inspectors. Even after being inspected, the life belts were lacking in strength and were only held in place by strings made of cork and canvas. It is possible that passengers were unable to board lifeboats due to vests that were poorly constructed, which ultimately led to their deaths. A great number of passengers were coerced into jumping into the icy waiter, and they frequently became unconscious. In the aftermath of World War II, similar vests were improved and modified as a result of the tragedy that occurred on the Titanic and the men's fates, which makes this picture even more terrifying. 4. Lifeboat On the Titanic, there were not many lifeboats available, but life belts were made available to all of the passengers and crew members. Possibly even more terrifying than the previous one is this Titanic lifeboat with its davits. The tonnage of the boat was established by the Board of Trade, which was responsible for determining the number of lifeboats that were required. Therefore, the crew was not always to blame for the lack of boats. In spite of the fact that 16 boats were recommended, the Titanic had 20 boats instead. There were not enough boats to accommodate more than 50% of the crew and passengers. Currently, the Board of Trade assigns boats based on the number of passengers and crew members. On the day that the Titanic sank, mandatory lifeboat drills were not going to take place because there was a church service on Sunday. As the ship sank, this contributed to an increase in havoc and confusion. 5. The Room of J.P. Morgan The Green Parlor, which was modeled after Versailles, is located here. A large bathroom, a room for reading and writing, a smoking room, a reception area, and a lounge were all within its premises. J.P. Morgan, another owner of White Star Line, abruptly canceled his trip on the Titanic as well as his room on the ship. It was further complicated by the cancellation. As a result of Benjamin Guggenheim, Isidore Strauss, and John Astor's opposition to Morgan's concept of a centralized banking system, the United States Federal Reserve, there are those who believe that Morgan was the one who brought the ship down. This theory has been the subject of debate among historians for many years. Some historians have proposed more rational explanations for his cancellation, such as the fact that he became ill, that he desired to spend more time with his mistress, and that he desired to remove his wealth from France after a law prohibited Americans from exporting artwork. A claim has been made that there is no credible record that explains why he decided to cancel his trip. The lounge and reception area of Morgan's suite was discovered by James Cameron while he was conducting research on the Titanic wreck. It was reported that the fireplace featured grills, a large and expensive marble facade, and furniture that was plated with gold. 6. Kids playing on deck Keeping in mind that the Titanic was carrying children is a sad thought. Over 100 children were present for the first, second, and third grades. William Carter, age 11, whose two dogs were in the ship's kennel. Marjorie Collier, age 8, who had left her favorite doll by accident. And Johan Svensson, age 14, who was traveling from Sweden to South Dakota to join his father and older sister, were among the children who were on the boat. The ship's numerous upper-class play areas were off-limits to children who were traveling in third class. Third-class children frequently had to find ways to amuse themselves. Frankie Goldsmith, who was nine years old at the time, was at the time with Johan. Frankie enjoyed swinging from baggage area cranes. Some individuals, primarily those belonging to the third class, were unable to make it to the limited number of lifeboats, despite the fact that the rule stated that women and children first. 7. Swimming Pool The middle deck of the ship featured a swimming bath that measured 30 feet in length, 14 feet in width, and 6 feet in depth. By the standards of today, the pool on this ship is quite small. It accommodated salt water. As a luxury, it was inaccessible to adults from lower social classes, as well as children from all families. The fact that men and women were not allowed to swim in it at the same time, and that women were not allowed to have free swimming periods, is an interesting fact. Outside of free periods, the cost of swimming is 25 cents for both free and paid swimmers. That sum of money was used to purchase a swimsuit. The act of swimming after the shipwreck would have been extremely distressing for those who had survived, particularly those who had been submerged for a considerable amount of time. It is unsettling to look at the large pool of water that is currently on the ship. Although the bulkhead of the Titanic is watertight, it is possible that the swimming pool is in good condition, which was unknown to the explorers. 8. 
First Class Food The difference between first class and third class amenities can be seen by comparing this image to the following one. It is the opulent dining hall reserved for first class passengers. Having sensual food served inside was appropriate given the setting. During the final day of the Titanic's voyage, April 14th, the first class breakfast consisted of steaks, chops, and omelets that were prepared to order. There were a variety of dishes available at the lunch buffet, including smoked sardines, ham and veal pie, spiced beef, corned ox tongue, chicken galantini, potted shrimp, and salmon mayonnaise. The dessert course consisted of cheeses such as stilton, camembert, and cheddar, among others. Dinner consisted of a variety of dishes, including salmon and oysters, filet mignon, chicken that had been sautéed, rack of lamb with mint sauce, sirloin of beef, roast duckling, punch romaine, cold asparagus vinaigrette and celery. There was French ice cream, chocolate eclairs, and Waldorf pudding among the desserts that were served. In addition to the dining saloon, the ship featured a number of restaurants that were of the highest quality. A couple of examples include the A la carte Veranda Cafe, which has a tropical theme, and the Parisian Cafe. 9. Third Class Dining Saloon Without a doubt, first class was a more luxurious experience than third class. During this photograph, they are seen sleeping in bunk beds and small cabins and eating in a dining hall that is relatively small. By virtue of the fact that the majority of steerage passengers on other ships were required to bring their own food, third-class passengers were provided with a satisfactory level of nourishment. Meals served to passengers in third class were superior to those served on other ships. They served food that was less elaborate than that served in first class. Some of the breakfast options included smoked herring, ham, eggs, oats, and fresh bread, all of which are high in protein. Some additional fresh bread, roast beef, rice soup, and cabin biscuits were included in the lunch menu. Lower-class passengers were frequently provided with biscuits as a means of preventing seasickness. The sweet course consisted of plum pudding, fruit, and sweet sauce. Due to the fact that dinner was considered a meal reserved for the wealthy, it was not served to passengers traveling in third class. On the contrary, they were presented with a tea in the afternoon that consisted of cold meats, cheese, fresh bread, and butter. For tea, additional cabin biscuits, rice, thin porridge, and stewed figs were served alongside the beverage. The unfortunate reality is that 75% of third-party passengers would pass away during afternoon tea on April 14th. 10. Exercise Equipment Only first-class passengers were permitted to use the gym on the Titanic. Exercise bikes, rowing machines, and a mechanical horse saddle were all available to riders so that they could keep their muscles in good shape. Those who go to the gym are dressed to the nines in this photograph. Satin gloves, heels, velvet dresses, overcoats, and elaborate hats were some of the items that women wore. It was not a casual workout outfit that they wore. The fact that we now know that physical activity might not improve health and life expectancy is a disturbing picture to look at because of this new information. Only 45% of women in third class survived the sinking, but 97% of women in first class survived. So who knows what happened to the other women? It is possible that her survival was by chance. At the time of the sinking of the Titanic, 123 first class passengers perished. However, not all of the people who used the gym's equipment made it back home. 11. Ice water. Considering that it was taken a few days prior to the sinking of the Titanic, it demonstrates how icy and cold the water was after the ship sank. It became even colder as a result of a high-pressure cold front that originated in eastern Canada and the ship sinking in the night. It was estimated that the temperature of the water was 28 degrees Fahrenheit. At a temperature of 28.4 degrees, salt water freezes, whereas fresh water freezes at 32 degrees. Simply put, the water was extremely chilly. Within the first 30 minutes of being submerged in water, individuals who suffered from hypothermia, cardiac arrest, or other cold water shock complications passed away. The water was freezing cold. It is estimated that between 44 and 48 people who dove into the water survived, and the majority of them were rescued by lifeboats. 12. Iceberg Despite the fact that it was taken after the Titanic sank, the photographer was unaware of this fact. This could be the iceberg that caused the Titanic to sink. Perhaps it is. On the morning after the sinking of the Titanic, this photograph was taken by a steward of a passing ship. As was mentioned earlier, the passengers on board the boat were not aware that the vessel had sunk. 
It was reported by the photographer that he observed red paint on the base of the large ice formation. A large number of people are of the opinion that the sinking of the Titanic was caused by an icy mound, regardless of which iceberg it collided with. Despite the fact that lookouts saw the iceberg in the dark at the very last second, the ship proceeded to hit it. This caused the iceberg to break through the steel plates of the ship, which resulted in six compartments being flooded. After that, everything went from bad to worse. 13. Sinking Entertainment The first-class passengers were reportedly served while the boat was sinking, according to some accounts. There is a possibility that passengers were not aware of the potential dangers. Nobody appeared to be frightened or perturbed. Additionally, Charles Jugan, the chief baker on the Titanic and one of the most improbable survivors of the disaster, also made a contribution to the Senate hearing that took place during the United States. First-class passenger Eloise Smith testified during the hearing. According to reports, he consumed an excessive amount of alcohol in order to survive. According to reports, he decided to get off the boat and paddle cautiously until a lifeboat came to his rescue. Such an experience is not typical. As a result of the warm sensation that occurs when blood rushes to the surface of the skin after drinking, which decreases the amount of blood surrounding the organs and increases the risk of death due to hypothermia, it is believed that heavy drinkers pass away at an earlier age. According to Gordon Geisbrecht, a Canadian expert on hypothermia, Jugin's blood vessels constrict rapidly in the cold waters of the North Atlantic that night, which negates the effects of the alcohol. What allowed him to make it through all of this? Scientists believe that he is able to save lives through the use of liquid courage. 14. Passengers Waiting in Line On April 10, 1912, this photograph depicts a lengthy queue of people waiting to board the Titanic. Only a small number of the people who were on board the massive shipwreck are depicted in this picture. On April 15, 1912, the ship was carrying a total of 2,240 passengers and crew members. Due to the fact that it could only accommodate 1,316 passengers rather than 2,453, the ship was found to be significantly under capacity. However, first class had 324 passengers, second class had 285, and third class had 709 passengers. The class division was determined by the ticket price and the amenities. A little more than half of the passengers were killed when the ship sank. A 15. Hull of the Titanic The construction of the ship's hull is depicted in this image. The assembly was held together by more than 3 million rivets and thousands of steel plates measuring one inch in thickness. Scientists had stated that the boat was not capable of sinking. However, after it sank and was discovered, they discovered that the steel had become brittle due to the cold water. It was this, in addition to the damage that was done to the five watertight compartments of the Titanic, that contributed to the tragedy.